All right. Welcome, everybody. My name is Nila Jacques. I'm the executive director of the Open Daylight Project. And the idea of this panel came up because what, we've, what I've been seeing is that while at this point you would think that everyone in the world understands SDN, NFV, the differences, where we are, or at least it seems that way if you, if you uh, religiously go in and read every possible thing that you can on the topics every day, but I was forced to realize that not everybody necessarily does. And so I've been fielding a lot of questions around where are we on SDN? Where are we on NFV? How are people using it? How real is it? When is it going to be real? Is it, is it carrier grade? Does it matter to enterprises? There are all these questions that I find myself fielding over and over again. And so rather than get up here and tell you my thought about all of those questions, I thought a much better way would be to put together a panel with a range of individuals who represent different parts of the industry who can give you a feet on the ground view of where we are in terms of SDN and NFE. Um, there's been a couple changes to the panel um, that I want to highlight. Uh, Chris Luke from Comcast ended up not being able to make it at the last minute, and uh, Alex Zhang from uh, China Mobile is here to uh, replace him. We also had another last minute cancellation. Margaret Kiyosi had a medical issue and had to leave urgently, and so we have Brian Sullivan here uh, from AT&T replacing. So the first thing that I wanted to do is give you a chance to get to know each of these people. They're all pretty impressive in their own right. Some of them, in fact, wear a couple different hats, and I'll ask them to share sort of the different hats uh, that they wear. Brian, can you go first? Thank you, Neela. Uh, so um, I work inside the AT&T um, cloud architecture team. Uh, Toby is actually uh, the person I work for. And um, we're involved in sort of coordinating, architecting, uh, uh, motivating the, the solutions that we ultimately implement inside the ATT Integrated Cloud and Domain2. And, and my particular role is helping to facilitate open source engagement inside the open platform for NFV and you know, Open Daylight and OpenStack, et cetera. And basically helping thread the, the, AT, the broader AT&T team that's, that's doing developer uh, type things into a, you know, a strategy. Excellent. Thank you. Chris Price? Uh, my name is Chris Price. I work in Ericsson's CTO office uh, focused on open source technologies for SDN Cloud and NFV. Um, that's, my, that's my salaried cap. Uh, I, also, I also work within the OPNFV uh, project. I, I chair the technical community there. Uh, and I also attend the technical community um, or committee of the Open Daylight project which is chaired by the gentleman next to me. Thank you. Colin Dixon. So um, as I said, uh, as Neil said, I'm Colin Dixon. I work for Brocade, but I spend almost all of my time working upstream on a combination of, uh, of open daylight and a bunch of other things. Um, I chair the technical steering committee, which means I'm responsible for things going wrong and have no ability to control it. So that's a lot of fun. If you want the job, <laughs> let me know. Um, but uh, I also spend a bunch of my time talking with customers and helping to architect and um, support Brocade's uh, distributions, not only of Open Daylight, but also of Tacker and a couple of other uh, open source projects. And I sit inside of sort of our open source product team at Brocade. Yeah, good morning, everybody. My name is Alex. I'm from China Mobile. Uh, for me, actually, I work in the uh, uh, Silicon Valley office. Uh, we have the uh, advanced research lab there. I'm working on SDN and uh, NFV uh, technologies. Uh, I'm also part of uh, China Mobile's uh, uh, SDN and NFV program called uh, NovoNet. Uh, so this is uh, China Mobile's program to build our next generation network. Uh, we're going to use a lot of uh, SDN and NFV technologies. And we're also embracing the uh, open source projects. So that's why we are here for this summit. Uh, for myself, I'm pretty active in the open source projects. I'm the, one of the members in the advisory group of Open Daylight, and also the vice chair of the uh, operator area for ONF. And I'm also active in the OPNFV, and so very good to be here. Perfect. Thanks. So you see here on this panel, what we have is two people who work for user organizations, 
to individuals who happen to work for vendors, although they work very closely within the upstream uh, community. And I think this actually represents a lot of what we're seeing in OpenStack, in Open Datalight, and OPNFV. I think where we are today is we're in a place where the communities have really come together, and end users sit side by side with developers, whether they work for vendors uh, or whether they work for research institutions. And so with that, I wanted to start with probably the most burning question that I have been getting recently, which is lots of people, I think, understand technically what SDN and NFV are. And yes, they are different. Um, but one of the questions I keep getting asked is, well, what is it good for? What are people actually doing with SDN and NFV? Is it just a set of pox where people are doing R&D to try and sort of see if this technology might be good, might be useful for something, or are people solving real problems? So I wanted to start with Colin. As you manage the overall developer community in open daylight, I'm sure one of the questions that often comes up is what problem are we solving? So tell us, what are you seeing in terms of the primary use cases out there for SDN and NFV right now? Um, so that's one of the questions we've tried to answer since its inception. And um, we tried to answer it uh, the first time in Hydrogen, and we got it really, really wrong. We released a service provider edition, uh, you know, a data center edition, and something else, and nobody found any of them useful. Um, since then, we've had a, uh, a user advisory group that's been able to give us a ton of feedback. We've also seen more people pick it up and run with it. Um, and the use cases are incredibly broad, which um, speaks really well to the fact, I mean, Open Daylight has a, just a huge number of different southbound drivers and applications and models inside of it. So you can, it's really a Swiss Army knife to do whatever it is that you want to do. Um, but you know, specific use cases we've seen, we've seen a lot of data center interconnect, which is more SDN than NFV. Um, but you know, certainly data center interconnects, when you start doing really sort of SD-WAN, and you end up with optimizers sitting at the end, starts to have to do lifecycle management of VNFs in order to try and do compression, you know, mitigation of loss, collecting alternate paths as you do data center connect. So that tends to bleed between the two. We've seen network virtualization be a significant use case. Um, surprisingly, a lot of network virtualization is in support of not necessarily uh, connecting the endpoints, but uh, in support of NFV, which is basically how do you use, how do you create the virtual network that is your service chain through the VNFs that you provisioned, even if the endpoints aren't under, say, OpenStack's control. So how do you look at OpenStack as basically one giant middle box, which you can then use to control everything, which you can then orchestrate paths through, even though the endpoints aren't resident within an OpenStack-controlled environment. Um, and we've seen pretty much everything else. Um, people try and replace their WANs with software-defined ones in order, to, in order to do, you know, traffic engineering internally, even without, like, when they have direct control over the links, things kind of like Google's before, um, and all the way to straight up just, you know, lifecycle management of your VNFs, um, which is actually still really, really, really hard. Um, the Tacker project is taking stabs at it, but how you actually go from, you know, spinning it up, you know, uh, updating it, getting its configuration right, winding it down, making sure you can scale it out. Um, lifecycle management of VNFs is really, really tough. Um, and I think Open Daylight provides a reasonable layer on top of standard VNFMs to sort of talk about that and how to make that migration simple. That's a bunch of the use cases. I mean, there's, there's many more than that, but hopefully it gives you some sampling of what I see people using it for in practice. Great. So, Colin, I think what I got out of that is you're seeing a broad range of things. This is a technology that can be used to solve many, many problems. Maybe I'll go to, to an end user, Brian, as he's uh, picking up his, uh, his glass. You know, at AT&T, AT&T obviously has a network that is quite important to it. Um, and there are many places you could start with SDN and NFV. Can you talk a little bit about what are some of the places that you've started and why have you started there? Okay. Um, well, our, our first major product based on the SDN concept is network on demand. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and we started there because basically it's, it's fundamental to our very large distributed network and it's, it's a key way in which enterprise customers you know, get service from us. Um, you know, we, we are, you know, working on NFV and, and uh, preparing VNFs to be rolled out, you know, um, and basically working on the cloud architecture and cloud elements of the AIC, but, but to start with what we fundamentally know uh, as networking, right? Uh, we started with, with network on demand, and it, it's, it's actually working out quite well for us. Um, uh, Margaret gave me a statistic. We have 450 customers. Uh, on this, over 450 customers and 2,000 ports on our network on demand service. Um, it, it enabled us to, you know, uh, 
begin with provisioning circuits and uh, you know in in near real time um, and drastically you know reduce the amount of time it takes to to, to turn things up and, and actually show the promise of an, an automated uh, control plane for networks um, so that's probably the, the number one and, and following after that you know there'll be quite a lot of, of virtualization of existing functions in, inside our data centers et cetera that we'll be rolling out great thank you yeah. Chris and Alex, is there anything you want to add from your perspectives? Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, I'll add a couple of use cases. Uh, one thing is similar to Brian said that uh, in China Mobile, uh, like I mentioned a little earlier, we, we do have a, our own program called a Novanet. Right? So we have uh, designed quite a few uh, what we believe very important use cases uh, to um, you know, deploy SDN technology. Uh, so one of them is, is what we call a transport network. Uh, so uh, this is where we want to uh, provide this network on demand and establish the uh, dynamic connection between two customer sites. To, right? Uh, so this is one of the kind of a similar scenario. Uh, so we do look at it, the uh, uh, open daylight and as the base controller so we can build application on top of that. Uh, so this is one use case. The other use case actually is very important for us is uh, somewhat similar to what I just mentioned, the data center. Um, so we are uh, evolving our data center. Uh, we, we do have uh, public, uh, you know, public you know, cloud services and the virtual private uh, cloud services that we're offering in mainland China. So we like to enhance, improve the networking part of this uh, cloud service or the infrastructure. So we use uh, the SDN controller to uh, develop the new technology. Right, based on the uh, the virtual uh, uh, underlay and uh, you know, overlay uh, to control it more efficiently and uh, to, to allow us to have more elastic networking capabilities so that we can evolve our data center to the next generation. Great. Well, question for Chris Price now. Um, we're here at the OpenStack Summit, right? And we've been talking a lot about SDN controllers, and we'll talk more about SDN controllers. Um, but let's talk a little bit about OpenStack. You're the uh, chair of the TSC for the OPNFE project, and I know that there's been tremendous pressure, I think, to test how can people leverage OpenStack specifically, as well as some of the components under OpenStack infrastructure, to deliver uh, virtual network, virtualized network functions. Can you talk a little bit about the role of OpenStack specifically Within NFE, um, sure. I mean, so so OpenStack is more or less the preeminent infrastructure management suite that we have in the industry uh, from an open source reference perspective. Um, in OpenFV, we we have an, uh, essentially a vision to come out and create an executable platform, a reference platform that provides a hosting environment for network functions, um, which can be extended into the network and can extend to an edge environment. Um, OpenStack is the place that we come to. It's the place with the broadest community. Uh, it's the place with, with the most, I guess, traction and, um, and velocity when it comes to feature development to help us address those use cases. So when we want to deploy a network function, a VNF, um, we can do so knowing that things like Nova, Nova scheduling, Numa pinning, the types of capabilities that we need in order to get the best uh, performance out of the functions that we're trying to deploy are available to us. Uh, we know that we can do networking. We know we can use Neutron if we want to layer to network. We know we can use Open Daylight if we want to start to do LSO API for connectivity services to an edge, for instance. We know that we can, we can extend and leverage these types of capabilities. And from a, 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 a coordination or, or a management and orchestration perspective, we can leverage interfaces from both uh, OpenStack uh, and, for instance, Open Daylight's northbound interface to coalesce this into a set of commands that allow us to essentially, from an NFV perspective, get a, get a software interface towards both the network uh, and the cloud environment. All right. Follow-up question on that. Um, OpenStack wasn't necessarily designed for NFV to begin with, um, but it can certainly be very useful to NFV. Are the needs the same? Are they exactly the same? Are there some additional needs? Can you compare and contrast a little bit, or any others who have insight into this, around the needs on OpenStack from an NFV use case versus a typical cloud IaaS use case? Yeah, so I mean, I think to begin with, we, we started with this Telco Cloud is 5.9s, Telco Cloud is better performant, Telco Cloud is all the things that an enterprise cloud wants to be anyway. 
Um, I, I think we were mistaken when we started to, to articulate that as what is a telco cloud. Uh, I think from an operator's perspective, and, and these guys can correct me if I go off the rails, but, but my understanding from an operator's perspective is it's not about having a cloud which provides you a, a virtual environment to run a function. It's about virtualizing your end to end infrastructure, about creating uh, an environment whereby I can instantiate uh, a service across my network which, which may end up with functions in a car running on a freeway that I'm deploying and having lifecycle management of in real time uh, through my virtualized infrastructure. I mean, these types of use cases, this is what NFV is all about. It's not about building a data center. It's about creating the capability for that data center to extend out into the network and to extend in, in a normalized and standard way. I mean, Google, Google's great. Google has a sandbox, the world's biggest sandbox, and they can do what they like. Uh, if you want China Mobile and AT&T and Verizon and everyone else to be able to do those types of things, we need normalized standard systems. Uh, and we need to start to deal with those same types of use cases. We need to create an environment uh, where I can treat my entire network as, as a virtual platform. I think that's NFV. Right. Anyone else want to add any color to that? Yeah, I, I think uh, to me, like uh, we, of course, we we uh, embracing the uh, the open source projects. Uh, I believe OpenStack, you know, uh, positioned very well uh, in the uh, resource management. Right? If we have uh, telco workloads, uh, we want to um, support it by the uh, network function virtualization or VNFs. Yeah, certainly I, I will go with the uh, open stack to begin with, All right? So this allows us to control the resource. Uh, so this is what I call the computing part, but there is also the connecting part, right? Which is what we used to call the networking. So, so I believe uh, we, we, we certainly are looking at the, the SDN controllers to provide us more advanced capabilities to allow us to do the, uh, the networking part. Uh, so I think the open stack Stack uh, networking part. We have Neutron, you know, API, you know, ML2 is very uh, popularly, you know, widely used. But on the other hand, you want to look, look at the end-to-end, -end, like Chris mentioned, end-to-end -end networking need, or even the uh, the orchestration, you know, need. And then we, we have we need to have more advanced in networking capabilities. This is where we believe either we can have uh, you know these capabilities from uh, SDN controller or controllers, uh, such as ODL, or we, we need to largely enhance the, the networking module of the uh, open stack, right? So this, I believe there are some projects going on, right, to add, let's say, L L3 VPN capabilities to, to the open stack. So this is actually pretty important, right? So you can push you know, the, the scalable uh, layer three solutions uh, all the way to the end. So these are the kind of things that are, at least uh, we are looking at it. So Alex, what you're saying is that you're investing in SDN and NFV across your entire network. And so you don't want your uh, OpenStack-based infrastructure as a service cloud to be a separate silo. Yeah, this, yeah certainly uh, this is the key point, one of the key points. Uh, we, we do want to have uh, you know, the one integrated system that will allow us to do everything, uh, not only the, the networking part, right? And uh, so it's not going to work you know, if we have individual components sitting in the silo. Right. In fact, uh, you know, uh, we, we actually China Mobile, uh, we are pushing an uh, you know, open source you know, orchestration system in you know, an effort of uh, bringing all things together, right? So there will be a session tomorrow morning at you know, uh, 9 o'clock, so, so please uh, join that session. I think it's in the ne next room. Right, so we're gonna talk about open source in orchestration. Yeah, so so the key point is still the same that we we do want to have uh, you know the, all these uh, you know component and uh, to work or system to work together. Right, so good. Yeah. Um, I actually want to double click on something. I'll go to Colin next, and then Ryan. Um, a question I often get from the OpenStack community is, you know, OpenStack is complex enough. You're talking about bringing in an SDN controller. Doesn't that just add complexity? Why do we need it? Why can't we just use ML2? I'm sure you get that question a lot too, Colin. Maybe you can take the first crack at it from a developer perspective, and then we can get Brian to take the user perspective on that one. Um, uh, sure, sure. So ML2 is, um, and you know, Neutron in general, the APIs are 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 great for, re and, and you know, the reference implementations of them are really fantastic for modestly sized deployments, which to be honest are most of them. Um, so if you have like a single rack of servers or maybe two and you have two tours, 
Um, the truth of the matter is Nova Network probably worked fine. Um, uh, uh, you know, I mean, that, that's just, I'm just being honest. Um, uh, and so, like, you know, I I if you needed separation, you could use VLANs. As the network gets more complex, you start to span across um, geographic areas, you start to have actual bottlenecks and constraints, you start to have to thinking about routing through service functions, and so pathing becomes complicated and non trivial. You don't know whether you are leaving a VNF or entering a VNF necessarily when you sort of come onto a vSwitch. And so, starting to track all of that stuff tends to strain um, the interfaces and implementations that we have today. Um, and for better or for worse, the most robust implementations we have of how to deal with that sit outside of OpenStack and SDN controllers like, you know, Open Daylight, Onos, and the like. Um, and so if you're curious, um, so that, that's sort of when I think you start needing to talk about um, using an SDN controller. And I don't really think, I mean, the difference between Open Daylight and being a second project that sits over to the side and being a project within OpenStack, um, as a developer, I don't find it compellingly different. There are slightly different communities, but there's a lot of overlap. Um, but the level of complexity that you add on, I don't think is wildly different. Um, and so it's really when the network starts to be an element you have to think about and reason about, you have to think about it, reason about it, and you might as well use the tools which have evolved in order to do that, um, as opposed to sort of pretending it doesn't exist, um, which works really well at small scales and not so well at large scales. Great. Brian, can you give us the user perspective on that question? Yeah, well, there was a good bit of, of user perspective in what Colin said um, <laughs> as, as well. But, but I, I would put it this way. I mean, you know, if someone said, you know, why do you need this thing beyond what OpenStack can do? You know, I would say, okay, first of all, we've got dozens of data centers. We've got thousands of central offices, right? And we're going to put, you know, clouds in all these places, right? And if... If OpenStack was just, you know, uh, shipping bits out of the workloads, you know, into a, a port somewhere on some router inside the edge of that, you know, point of presence, basically the, the network as we know it today would be exactly the same. It would be static. It would be provisioned. It couldn't react dynamically, right? So that's the fundamental thing is that the, the, this, this very broad, dynamic, uh, um, network environment requires something which is designed specifically to address those types of issues. That, that's the, the fundamental thing, why we need a controller. Okay. Um, the second thing is, is that network functions as a, um, you know, they, they call them network functions for a reason, right? Um, they really have a life cycle. They, they need to be managed, right? And a controller provides us a way specifically to design you know, using, a, a, for example, in Open Daylight, a modeling, you know, language to design the lifecycle management of that network function in ways that OpenStack doesn't enable us to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in the end, you know, we, we need both functions. We need cloud and we need network working together through, you know, an orchestrator you know, to, to make things happen in the right time, et cetera. Uh, and we, we need OpenStack to be really, really good at what it does. For example, in the last question, uh, um, my response would have been NFV on OpenStack requires it to be just massively scalable, multi-site, et cetera. There are a number of things we need in OpenStack to do really well for compute and storage and what it does best. Right. right, and the the SDN things we need to focus upon, you know, that that whole problem domain, you know, really separately, and, and a controller does that for us. Right. So I think one of the things that I'm hearing from a from a number of you has to do with scale, right? And is that whether we're talking about SDN or whether we're talking about an FV, when you hit levels of scale that are high enough that one or two people can't do it themselves, you need some degree of automation to be able to get the agility that you want. And certainly in Carrier Cloud, you have that scale. I was recently uh, in China at Baidu, and I was knocked flat by the scale that someone like Baidu has to have. Um, and therefore, this is why they're turning to solutions like, uh, or technologies like Open Daylight to be able to, uh, to manage what might end up being 90,000 top of rack switches in their environment. And, and I just want to be really clear that like Open Daylight is, it, we, we do, we, our, our goal in life is to be able to be the best 
networking provider for OpenStack in existence. And so if you have ways that we could do that better, that would be fantastic. But we're not out here trying to create new APIs and saying that Neutron is the wrong approach. We have a complete implementation of the Neutron APIs. We're working with the networking SFC guys inside of OpenStack. So really, this is not a, like, you know, look, we understand how to write these APIs better than everybody else, so just come listen to us. This is really just, you know, us saying we have a set of primitives underneath that we can use to help implement the APIs which people find useful in the OpenStack community and the NFV community. And so think of us as, you know, a sister project to OpenStack that happens to not sit in OpenStack.org. Um, but really, we're, we're, we're trying in every conceivable way that we can to be as close to uh, just supporting those APIs. When we need additional features, we develop them on the side, and we try and figure out the right way to integrate them upstream. And that's really what Chris and OPNFV um, are, are doing really excellent jobs of, which is trying to be that broker. Um, so I, lest you get the idea that we're saying, you know, just don't worry about networking. We've got that. Walk away from it. Uh, that's, it couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, a question for Chris Price now. Um, one of the questions that I have heard uh, asked over and over again has to do with maturity, right? So one of the questions you're looking at implementing OpenStack and Open Daylight or another controller uh, together, especially in an NFE environment, is these networks matter, right? And you may only get one shot, maybe two, uh, but the cost of failure is really, really high. So people have been asking this question of, you know, when is it time? How ready are we? Where, where do we start? And so I'm curious, as, uh, as the chair of the Technical Steering Committee for OPNFE, your view of where we are. We've started to see uh, Red Hat. We started to see Canonical Ubuntu uh, package a controller, Open Daylight, with with OpenStack today, you now and OPNFV have gone through two releases, I believe. Can you talk a little bit about where you think we are in terms of the maturity curve of a solution that includes uh, those two components? Um, so, so in OPNFV, we, we package a number of SDN controllers within, within the cloud environment. Um, we, we take Neutron. Uh, we can provide a, a cloud with Neutron networking. We provide an open daylight uh, based networking. And we include ONOS and open contrail. Uh, and, and, and we can include any networking solution that we like. Um, what we do is we, we put it towards paces. We run, uh, for any given release, we're running millions and millions of test cases. We're pulling upstream test cases, running our, running our own test cases. Uh, we try and do things at scale. Well, we try and do things in HA uh, and, and high availability um, deployments on bare metal with top of rack switches so that we're not just running things in a cloud and, and, and expecting things to work. We run it in the situation where it has to talk to an actual switch and where we're going to run into any race conditions because we're running a three blade uh, high availability cluster. Um, we do that repetitively. We did that in, in our first release Arno and things didn't go so great. Um, the maturity of the solutions weren't ideal, uh, and we learned a lot. Uh, we came back to the Open Daylight community, we came back to the OpenStack community, um, and we talked through what were problems we were finding. Uh, we did a stable release of Arno, which improved things considerably. You could actually use the solution. Um, and then we moved to Brahmaputra, where, where we actually went through the next big iteration. We, we pulled in Liberty, we pulled in Beryllium uh, for Open Daylight specifically, and, and with the feedback that we'd given and, and, and with the, the test cases and, and verifications that we'd, we'd actually worked with, we now see that we can take these technologies. We can deploy, um, you know, IMS. Every single time we deploy an OpenStack uh, instance in OPNFV, and we've deployed over 2,000 of them so far this year, uh, every single time we do that, we spin up a virtual IMS solution on that just to make sure that it works. And that's just a baseline for us. If it can't carry a, a, a telco VNF, then it's not passing our test cases. Uh, and, and Open Daylight, to be honest, go back a year, it couldn't. Uh, it really couldn't pull up a, a, an IMS system. It would fail. Now it can. Now, now we see that we have the maturity in, in, in the integration, the maturity in the software that, that we can start to, to exercise and leverage the types of workloads that we want to actually support. Cool. Anybody want to add any color on that? No. Oh. I've got another question teed up then. Um, <laughs> The last sort of one that I want to ask, and then I'm going to ask uh, folks to get up and, uh, and give us some questions, some uh, user questions, or sorry, some audience questions. Um, I'm often asked this question around the role of users in an open source project. I think m those of you who've been around to a few OpenStack summits, in the early days, there was a question of where are the users? 
Uh, this seems like a developer or a vendor-led project, and I think OpenStack has gone a long way with the super user program in really bringing end users into the fold. Um, this same uh, criticism was uh, thrown out at Open Daylight and, uh, and OPNFE in the early days. And I'm curious, for, for, from each of your perspective of where you are, can you talk about the end user developer community that has been created? Do you see these communities as truly working together, the user community, and the developer vendor community? Um, and what do you see as the role of an end user in an open source project like Open Daylight, OPNFE, or OpenStack? So, so yeah, I think the, um, the, the fundamental reason why OPNFE was formed was that as users, as, as people working inside standards on NFV, right, in, in Etsy, we saw it wasn't happening fast enough, right? And so somebody who's just working on technology, developing something, they probably, you know, they, they, they like it and it's interesting and, and they do good things, but, but nobody's sitting there stamping their foot going, can we have it yet? Right? And so that was a very end user focused thing. Let's get it done. And, and, and then in the process, we brought together, you know, the, 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 the implementers, the, the, you know, the large operators, et cetera, as a, as a community of, of developers and users together. And, and this week in, uh, in OpenStack, for example, the, in the ops uh, summit that happened on Monday, it was very clear that you know, we, we share a lot as an end user group with the very broad set of, of operators of OpenStack clouds. Uh, in fact, many of these operators are out there you know, uh, reporting on things that they find, their experiences, et cetera, and not necessarily having like like some of the, the big telcos or some of the you know the, the big operators, not necessarily having the, the, the time or the resources to actually go fix them. Mm -hmm. So as an end user community, those of us in OPNV and and those large operators inside OpenStack, we really need to represent this broader end user community and, and that's I think that, that kind of sensibility is forming and, and we're we're going to be uh, actually taking a lot of action to, to you know to drive solutions per those, those concerns in the future. So I think that's the role of an end user group, is to coalesce around the real priorities and then work and find the people who can just get it done. Great. I'll, I'll chime in on the OPNFV side. I think, it, as Brian alluded to, when we formed OPNFV, we formed it with the, with the user community in mind um, and an active user community. And Brian himself is a, is a PTL for two projects, one on, one on API normalization and one on policy and automation. Um, and, and he just comes and he gets stuff done. And, and all of a sudden we have a platform which is supporting policy and, and it's just a matter of getting in there and getting things done. We have, we have NTT Docomo, we have Orange, uh, we have, we have um, China Mobile, all putting resources in, all leading projects, all, all establishing trajectories for technology development within our community alongside uh, vendor partners. I think that's cool. it's one of the big success stories of OPNV. And I'm going to stop talking. And I'm actually going to pause because we have only a few minutes, and I'd love to get some questions. I see we've got one person at the mic, so sorry about that, guys. Hi, Neela. Scott Fulton with the new stack. In the containerization space, there are a number of ways in which uh, a number of the orchestrators will uh, utilize SDN to scale workloads out. And I'm wondering uh, if, if you gentlemen have any opinions as to how OpenStack uses NFV to uh, enable end-to-end -end, uh, uh, orchestration and end-to-end -end, uh, resource orchestration in a way that is superior to the ways that uh, the containerization space, I'm um, thinking of uh, Mesosphere, DCOS, and Kubernetes are using. And, uh, or is there a way that uh, some of these orchestration tools in the container space, containerization space are teaching us new things that we can incorporate into OpenStack and NFE. All right, thank you for the question. Any of you guys want to take a crack at this one? Question. SDN question. Um, so, 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 as I understand it, the question was essentially we have these container orchestration tools which look like OpenStack if you squint, um, Kubernetes, Mesosphere, things like that, but they are different in, in, in a variety of ways. And sort of what can we learn from that? What could an SDN and NFE bring to it? Um, so I, I think the thing which they've nailed in a way that has frustrated the R side has been the providing a unified abstraction to the whole system. So the idea that the data center as a computer as opposed to the data center as a way to write a for loop around 75,000 elements, um, they got better than we have. I think that's something we should take away. We should 
should learn and we should move forward with. Um, that being said, I think their software-only view of the world um, or you know, container-only view of the world tends to limit some of the pieces. So the idea that you might want to be able to have an NFV orchestration layer which could declare load balancers in between your different services, which might be PNFs, they might be physical load balancers, they might be VNFs, um, there might be a combination of the two bursting from physical to virtual, um, and actually treating the network as an element that is um, uh, real and perhaps complicated and difficult to schedule is something that they haven't done very well um, and something where it is that we could help and we certainly need to figure out how to better serve them. Um, so I don't know if that answers the question. but okay. We have another question over here. Yes, hi. You're speaking my language. I, uh, I work for a telco carrier. Uh, we're just now starting our virtualiz virtualized services um, from kind of the ground up. And, you know, we're getting pushed by, say, accountants to virtualize everything and they just walk in and say okay virtualize and people come to me and they ask me you know well why isn't just going to work tomorrow <laughs> and I say because you know OpenStack as it exists is meant for containerization it's meant for data services it's meant for this and that but it's not specifically meant for networking so we've come so far in such a short time I mean, how long do you think it's going to take for us to get up to literally a telco grade SDN, fully realized SDN? I, I might actually ask Brian to start yeah, on Brian the answer up. there, and then I'll go to you. And Brian, oh, just a, a quick uh, up front. So John Donovan stands up two years in a row at ONS and says, we're going to hit 75% and we'll do it tomorrow, right, more or less? Yeah. Something like that? <laughs> last week. Um, so really very bold statement. Obviously there's a lot of work that has to be done. And I get a peek under the scenes. It seems like there's hundreds of engineers working uh, on this. Can you maybe give a, a sense for those people who maybe don't have the full resource of AT&T, what does it take to get there? Um, and, what, and where are we from a technology perspective? Well, okay. So what John does is, is very essential. Basically, he, he's, he's giving the message to the, the, the market and to us, right? That this is a train, get on it, right? And yep. if, you know, if you're not ready to get on it, the train will pass you by and hook you and, <laughs> and drag you with it, right? So we are working extremely hard. We have a huge number of, of VNFs that are in the, the queue to get rolled out mm -hmm. into our domain two environment. Um, you know, network on demand though, I think showed that SDN is real. It's, mm -hmm. it's ready for prime time. Yep. And, um, you know, actually redeploying the, the, the custom network functions as cloud applications under OpenStack is, is, is very, very close. You know, I can't say specifically what we've done so far, but I can tell you it is a very fast moving train and it's, it's going to reach its destination very soon. So I believe the numbers that, yeah. he, that he quotes. And I believe Margaret has shared that you were just shy of 6% thus far. So 75% was the goal, 6% is what they've gone with a lot of people and a lot of work. And so I think actually that speaks to one of the pieces, which is, yes, this is happening happening, yes, this is real, but it does require, as Brian was saying, uh, people at the top making it a priority and a lot of people making it a focus of the work that they do. Chris? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll just add, we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not baking the whole pie here. We're building a layer cake. Um, you, you have OpenStack today. You have the ability to create virtualization uh, solutions within your network. Uh, you have the ability to interact with the network today to, to create interconnects and, and, and actually hit that first target, get that first foundation in place that starts you on this journey. Then from that you start to build the automation, you start to come in with the normalized APIs, uh, you start to talk to vendors about how you, can, how you can improve the way you're operating your network, and then you put that second layer on top. Uh, and, and this is, it's not a simple journey. The, the, we, need that, we need that first layer before we even know how we need to build applications in the future. I mean, I, a lot of vendors are guessing at this. We think it's going to look like this. This is the future, and, and maybe they're right. And if they are, good luck to them. But I mean, it's, it's it's a path, it's a, it's a journey. Um, when, when the accountants come in and they say, let's get started, give them the bill of materials for a, for a few hundred data centers and say, okay, let's go. I mean, this, and and then, then figure out how that looks in your, in your network and then figure out how to automate across your network. This is, this is a journey we have to take. So, so counter to the layer cake thing, I'll just say pick your biggest pain point and try and build the vertical. 
I mean, do something, do something now. If you're asking when is SDN going to be fully baked and completely realized, probably about 10 years after the next technology is relevant. Um, I mean, no, and this is, this is how technologies work. So pick something real that you can actually do today and do it. If you can't demonstrate value quickly, um, uh, you're going to get lost in the woods. Yeah, I, I'm going to add something uh, to this 75% uh, goal for virtualizing everything. And it's good to have a goal. Uh, I think 75% virtualization is a very aggressive goal. Uh, you know, so China Mobile is a big in a carrier, right? We operate a lot of large scale of networking in China. Uh, so it's not easy to migrate everything to virtualize the world. So it has to be a kind of a gradual process. Uh, and we like to move, talking about speed and calling mention, yeah, we like to move, we like to, uh, you know, deploy services uh, as, you know, quick as possible. So, so that's why, I, uh, you know, we, the virtualization of the function uh, is a part of it, but, but you know, it's, it's going to be, uh, you know, a gradual process to get there. So in between, we may have also the physical functions that we need to, you know, kind of plug in and work with. Right. I think last session, Toby mentioned the slides and the F in the X, you know, function, <laughs> you know, right? physical, virtual. So, so that's kind of part of it. The other important piece is really networking piece. Right. So I mentioned a little earlier in my comments that, you know, I do believe that the SDN controller, whether it's the OpenStack in the Neutron, you know, which is served as the networking piece for OpenStack. A lot of you know capabilities for networking needs to be uh, to be there, and uh, for example, the the IP, you know, uh, networking, the uh, VPNs, you know, the the overlay tunnels, and, and how do we do this? How do we uh, you know plug in this uh, centralized control you know, capability to that, and uh, those end-to-end -end service, you know, control right? The, the quality of service and the access control, and even the security issues all needs to be there, right, in order to provide end-to-end -end service. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Well, we're out of time. I just want to say a couple closing comments. I think, you know, one of the things that you saw on this panel is four individuals working for four different companies um, in different roles from each other, but who all, for the most part, tend to come at the same problem from their different perspectives. And I think this is one of the greatest parts about OpenStack, is OpenStack uh, was one of the first projects since Linux to really bring a broad range of people together, uh, each of which had different interests, but all who thought that collaboration with each other was a better way rather than being fractured and siloed in the industry. We're seeing the same thing happening in Open Daylight and in OPNFE. And the one thing that I know is the problems we're trying to solve will not be solved with just the people that we have there. In the same way as OpenStack has been growing uh, substantially and has needed to grow substantially, the NFE community in general, the SDN community, uh, together with the NFE community also needs to grow. So I'm hoping that a few of you having listened uh, to this discussion, realizing we don't have all of the answers, don't walk out going, well, you know what, I'll come back in two years and see how much progress that they've made. We'll come up to one of us and say, hey, I'd like to get involved. I have something to add. I have something to learn and I have something to add. And whether it's because you're a developer joining the development community, whether you're a tester wanting to do it, an end user wanting to give your input, we have a great advisory group in Open Daylight. I believe OPNFV is about uh, to create one. So if you're a network architect, there's a great role for you. Uh, we have many, many ways for you to get engaged and be part of making this revolution happen. I think at this point we've turned the corner. We know it's going to happen, but a lot of really good work needs to be done uh, to continue to move us along uh, towards that. So I'd like to invite each of you to just to take a second before you pick up your bag and walk out and ask yourself, am I in a place in which I can and want to add to this effort? And if yes, come up to one of us, give us your card, and we'll try and figure out a way to get you involved. With that, thank you. <laughs>